What is up everyone, Volith is here, and as you can tell by the title, I'm making another sort of review video. Now these, of course, are my pre-thoughts of Final Fantasy XIV Heavensward, um, and of course there's a thought process involved in that. If you don't know my thought process, which basically explains my experience in these type of games, please check out Final Fantasy XIV, my pre-thoughts on the Realm Reborn, and just watch the intro mainly because I don't want to repeat myself and it just explains a little bit where my thoughts are coming from. So without further ado, let's kind of hop into the things. First off, this video is way later than I planned. Um, why is that? Well, first off, when it, start, when it started coming out, I said, okay, I'll make the video after, you know, two weeks of content or whatever. Um, and unfortunately I didn't do that. And next thing you know, Alexander Normal comes out and I said, okay, well, I'll just put it off and review Alexander. And then Savage came out, unfortunately because of my full-time job and my raid group basically falling apart on me and essentially promoting me to raid leader, not being able to handle that kind of responsibility. I haven't been able to actually try Savage Alexander. I still want to, um, and there's a lot of content I still need to do, but this, these are pre-thoughts, so I don't expect me to have said I've tried everything. There's still a lot of things I'm going to try. Um, the things that I don't cover in this pre-thought video that I haven't tried, I'm hoping to have tried at least once or twice by the time my post-thoughts video comes out. I will try to assure you of that. But I'm hoping to get this video out before 3.1. That is my current goal, and hopefully I can get this done. So as I'm recording, it is not 3.1, so hopefully I can get this video done. So without further ado let's hop into some of my subjects and we'll just explain it um of course i'm not covering any pvp didn't touch any pvp uh, most of this is going to be pve it's going to discuss a lot of this at least a little bit of the story my thoughts on the dungeons the quest aether currents some of the flying mounts my thoughts on that um some of the jobs um and the, the skills um, from what I've covered as well as we'll talk some crafting and gathering. So without further ado, let's start with the story All right, and with the story I have to say I enjoyed the story a lot in Heaven's Ward and also it was very shocking to me I didn't exactly kind of predict where it was going in the story. Some things were predictable Not many though. Um, I would say to me. This is pretty much as shocking as 2.55 why is that? Well, first off, it kind of sums up the story of what we didn't know from 2.5. We find out some people that were supposed to be dead or alive. Um, now, granted, at this point, of course, this is spoilers. I'm so sorry for not mentioning that earlier. So if you haven't finished the story, I highly recommend finishing that. So let's discuss the rest of it. Um, people that we thought were dead aren't dead. Um, one... Unfortunately, I'm having difficulty remember the character names. Some of the people that we thought were evil or maybe not completely as evil. I don't 100% um, believe that. And of course, from the story, as we know, it seems like Lollapalls are very evil. Um, so I'm not holding like a final opinion on that, but I am shocked by that. Another thing is we lost another important character in the story. Um, didn't really see that coming. And it happens really late as you're really getting to know the character involved with that. Her, her fashion. Yeah, I can't even say his name, so I'm not even going to say it to butcher it. Um, the other thing is, uh, the main thing that was a shocker to was Estinian. Um, we eventually, now, to bear in mind, a few things were predictable. That Nidhogg's actual eye was not his own. Um... And the other fact of that was um, we find out later that, of course, his brother gave him that eye. Nidhogg actually lost both of his eyes. Estinian has held on to the original eye, but the other eye was hidden until recently. And then we finally um, defeat the Knights of the Round, and we acquire the second eye, and Estinian transforms into Nidhogg because of the power of the eyes. And I guess he let his guard down and all that. Um, and honest and the noble sacrifice of ice heart that we've dealt with and to me that was just a wowing shock factor the eye story i wasn't 
exactly surprised with. I thought it was, to me, it seemed there. It may have just been one of those things I picked up. I don't know how many of you picked that up instantly. Um, but I'm very interested to in see how that story develops. What are we going to do? Nidhogg is alive. Is there any possibility that we will save Astinia or is his he good as dead? It's very interesting to me and I can't wait to see what we do about that. And along with the stories, I feel like you have to talk about the quests. There were a lot of quests involved in this one compared to Aroma Born. I feel like there was a lot more. There's definitely a lot more walking around. Um, at a lot of points, you know, I would spend like an hour. I would just basically pick up all the quests in the area instead of just doing one area and just do them all and turn them in at once. Um, I didn't really utilize dungeons as much. Usually when I would do a dungeon once, I wouldn't touch it again. So I would eventually keep running out of quests to do. Um, and they were, I didn't mind them too much. The other interesting thing is we have this thing called Aether Currents now. Um, now, back in WoW, you don't really, you never really did a quest. You really just paid for your mount for life. But with the Aether Currents, you kind of have to work your way into it. You kind of, I feel like it's another way to earn your flying. And it's another interesting way that kind of makes you explore the area. At times, it was kind of annoying. You know, you get the Aether Currents. You could enjoy it for maybe a level. And then you go to the next zone and it's like, oh, great, I can't fly what not um i mean i've always been that kind of person once you kind of gain flying in a video game if it's through flying mounts or whatever i don't like going to the non-flying zones because i like being in the air and stuff i love airships and stuff like that that's just the type of person i am um i understand their reasoning behind not putting that in but now maybe in the future we might get it i don't know i'm not a developer so um, and on top of that, why don't we talk about the discussion of flying mounts? I like the current flying mounts. We may not have a wide variety, but that's also due to the fact that this was just recently added. And they already, we've already confirmed that coming in 3.1, um, mounts that have the capability that we thought of flight are going to be getting that flight. So that's already a plus in my book. Um, and obviously we'll unlock more flying mounts. I heard, um, for our pony collection at least the um, one that requires all of them is going to get a flight and they might even i think they've said that the other ones will get it as well um so that was basically my spiel on the stories and the dungeons and stuff out of that um and let's go ahead and talk about some of the dungeons and i think the dungeons were set at a very good difficulty while leveling so um, I didn't really have many trouble with most of the dungeons, but they do have sort of that challenge there and the gear. Um, in fact, we saw in this one that they were even decent forms of XP for a while. Um, I liked some of the mechanics involved with that. Um, some, Of course, we've had some repeats, like one boss, obviously, to me, was just like a Rafflesia. But they're adding new mechanics. I think the development team is testing to see what they can do. They're adding different fights you know um and why not let's discuss about the experts as well i know about you guys but i'm tired of never reap um unfortunately it seems like from the development team they said they're only going to be adding two dungeons at a time now um the only problem i see with two dungeons is that it just means more than life you're it's gonna feel like you're gonna get maybe one dungeon that you don't like and it'll probably feel like you get it all the time um, I mean, even when we had three dungeons, usually you would get about the same dungeon every once in a while. It's just, unfortunately, the, the rules of randomness. Um, it just doesn't feel as random. But I feel like they're definitely making an effort on making those challenges and all that involved in it. And um, I can't wait to see the other dungeons that are come. We've had previews of the 3.1 dungeons, and I can't wait for them to come out. Um, and we'll just have to see how they go. Um, and of course, after the dungeon gearing process and all that, we got to talk about Alexander. Now, like I said, I haven't touched Savage. I've only heard, haven't really watched videos because I'm like, I want to try it out on my own. Unfortunately, I've only, I've tried Extreme Bismarck, haven't had a good group on tank swapping, so I haven't cleared that either, but I will be trying that content eventually. But with Alexander normal, um, I feel like mechanically they're pretty good 
Now, these fights are pretty easy, but they've already warned us ahead of time and told us that this is going to happen. So I've kind of expected that. Um, most of the fights, you know, you can get down within the first couple of tries. Um, I believe I ended up clearing um, three, the first three in the first day. It was already late in the night. I mean, I probably, if I had the time, I could have done it all in one day. Um, the loot system is a little interesting. Um, unfortunately, I, I have mixed feelings about it just because of how the loot system works with that. Now, that is just involved. Um, it's a diff It's just like Crystal Tower and stuff like that to me. If there's a particular piece of loot that you know you need and you're going after it, it's going to be a pain, especially if it's on fights where they may only drop one or two. Um, I think like that they might need another way to make it more consistent. They said they're working on that. It's just really frustrating because um, when you're... The problem is when you're going for an item. If you don't have a my, item in mind and you're doing this weekly, I think it's a perfectly fine system. But if you are like, okay, turn or floor four, I need a shaft. Um, it's going to be a pain because I know I have to roll with other people. And usually the other problem is you run into a lot of other people who are going to be going through it, that piece of loot. Sometimes people aren't. Some people are. Um, they said they're going to work on it. So I wonder if we'll get maybe a method like how Savage works where you get a token regardless. And then after so many of those tokens, you can turn it in. Um, I would really enjoy that. Um, I do like, though, that the loot system for normal is very simplified. Anyone can roll on it. So it, there's a lot less, to me, useless loot. And that is very important because when you have a weekly lockout and I see loot hit the floor, I feel like it's kind of, you know, cruddy. I mean, but unfortunately, with this kind of process, that happens. Um, and the fights, I would say, aren't too bad at all design-wise. I can only imagine on Savage, besides hitting harder, there's probably... I've heard there's more mechanics and stuff like that, and I can't wait to try it. Unfortunately, I just haven't had the ability to. And next, we have the new jobs and the skills. Unfortunately, I can't really comment on the new jobs. I've only done, like, the first quest for each of them. So they're, all my three new jobs are 30. From what I've seen of them, though, they look very interesting, and I can't wait to try them out. It's just I chose Black Mage first. That's just how it's going to be. Um, so... I'm going to talk about currently where I'm at in the leveling process for the, at least my battle classes. Um, obviously, I got 60 Black Mage. Um, there's been a lot of controversy and people are, a lot of people don't like the new Black Mage rotation. I like it, but bear in mind, I've done a lot of years of WoW. The Mage class to me is standard. It's a class that will stand still as much as possible. Um, and the longer I stand still and don't have to move, the more damage I'm going to deal. Um, the reason why most people don't like the new rotation is because it's very unforgiving if you have to move. And a lot of the times you have to go, the procs aren't worth it, this spells better, um, which is why they keep trying to make these adjustments to it. Um, and I've noticed that on my initial burst, if I have to move for just more than like two seconds i already know i failed my burst that is the problem but i also feel like it adds that skill cap that um, mages have their rotation in essence is easy but pulling it off is where your struggle is and you just have to perfect that as much as possible um now the only other 60 at the moment that i've acquired is white mage um, and also to comment on the Black Mage, I enjoyed the story um, involving us working with a white mage who thinks we're all destructive and we can't do anything right, and we ended up helping a lot. Um, but back to the white mage um, was another one. We get a lot. Um, the white mage is still doing its role of being the bursty heals. I was a little bit surprised that we got a lot of free skills that don't cost any mana involved. And they, um, I like the Siege um, skill. And don't get me wrong, I like the other ones as too, including our little mini Lustrate. Um, and it's, and I was just surprised how much free mana skills we got, all of our heals. 
the AoE we get is free, a Siege is free, and it gives mana back, and our, um, our the White Mage version of Lustre is free. Um, and people were afraid the White Mages were going to go away, and to my knowledge, I don't think anyone has curb stomped anyone for being a White Mage. Um, it could be main because they have all these free skills, um, but I've noticed that also having those free skills have helped my mana pool a lot. Um, now, bear in mind, if you're going crazy on your heals, you're still going to go oom. But I noticed that it helps prevent me from going oom when I utilize those skills. And, of course, we have to talk about the crafting and gathering system. Because it kind of changed how gathering and crafting works in this game. Now, when they implemented this new system, I think it's an interesting turn for the system. It's definitely more time investment in the crafting. Um, I may not be the hugest fan of it, but mostly bad perspective comes from the fact that I just don't have time for it. Um, between capping for the week, um, getting Alexander loot, um, and my out of game responsibilities life and such like that i just don't have time to be invested in this crafting system with the blue scripts and the red scripts especially the red sit scripts since they're capped um and it was a little confusing to get into this system the gathering system is a whole lot different compared to what it is to the crafting from what i can tell the crafting is mostly you know just a different stance whereas the gathering is a different stance plus different moves on top of that so it's a little confusing um it's just getting some used to and also alhina just a quick shout out because you asked for it i wonder if you'll find it in the video anyways let's go on next to my final rating and lastly i just want to give sort of a rating scale um of course out of 10 based on my content and that really just leaves mostly the pve content um with the story i would say nine out of ten i enjoyed the story a lot like i said and i didn't predict a lot of the things but i felt that the things that were predictable were easily predictable now that leads into the class changes and all that the ones that i've dealt with i think they're wonderful it's um a good 8 out of 10 for me just because um, I think they're all right and I have heard some difficulties with the newer jobs so that is something that they're working on and need to continue to work on with at least from what I hear about Astrologian um, the d PVE content as far as goes for the um, the normal stuff slash the casual I think it's perfectly at an acceptable level kind of a 10 out of 10 if you're Actually, let's make it a 9 out of 10 just because I have problems with the loot. Um, it's just working really well. And then for the Savage, I wish I could give a ring. From what I hear, though, I hear it's fantastic. So I would have to say a good 9 out of 10. I'm not usually a person to give a 10 out of 10. Um, the scripts system, as the crafting goes, I want to say a 7 out of 10. Just because it's good new content. But like I said, I don't have the time for it, so I'm not exactly happy about that but that's not really my fault it's just how I can't fit that in and lastly and overall I would say a 9 out of 10 I think they've done a fantastic job on this expansion I can't wait to see the future patches so um, I better get to work on the rest of this video so I can get it to you guys before 3.1 comes out so I'll have to get back to my editing all that stuff um, if you like this video please hit the like button I totally meant to say enjoy, but whatever. <laughs> um, also, comment down below. Do you agree with my rating system? What do you like the most about the expansion? Um, the thing I like the most is the flying, just because I love flying in video games and stuff like that. So to me, that's awesome and amazing. Uh, and I like the mounts. And hopefully, I hear there's some future airship con content as well to come. So I can't wait for that. Um, subscribe to stay updated on my channel more videos to come and I will see you in the next video it's been a pleasure goodbye